Okay, hello everybody, it's time for the second half of the 2015 paper multiple choice section, questions 13 to 20. So 2015, part 2. Don't forget, your data sheet contains all the information, the numbers that you might require, and it's usually refractive index and spectral lines then in the second half of the paper that will be most useful to you. But let's see how we got on. And we got all the way to question 12 in part 1. So we're going to start at question 13 on interference of waves. Two identical loudspeakers are operated at the same frequency and in phase and an interference pattern is produced. Position P is the central maximum where the path difference is 0. And then we're told the next maximum is at position R where, and we're told the distance from each of the speakers to position R. So L1 to R is 5.6 metres, L2 to R is 5.3 metres. So we can work out the path difference between those two waves is 0 0.3 metres. Now the path difference to a maximum is always a whole number of wavelengths. M lambda is how that's written on your relationship sheet. Path difference equals m lambda to a maximum. And that's the first maximum out from the centre. Position R is the first maximum, so m equals 1. So the path difference is equal to one wavelength, and that will be 0 0.3 metres. Now if we know the wavelength and we have to find the frequency, then we're going to use v equals f times lambda, so we need to know the speed as well. And we're told that in the question, it's the speed of sound, it's sound waves. So then it's just a case of rearranging v equals f lambda, f equals v over lambda, that's 340 over 0 0.3. And if you do that on your calculator, you'll get 1133.3333. We're going to round that though, 1.1 times 10 to the 3 hertz. And that corresponds to answer D, 13D. Okay, 14, there's always a question on uncertainty somewhere in your paper. This looks like it. We have to find the mean of all these values of wavelengths of red laser light. Well, the mean, you simply add them all together. It's the sum of them all divided by how many of them there are. There's five in this case. And if you do the total divided by five, you'll get an answer of... 645.6 Now watch your rounding here because we've got options for both 645 and 646 so it rounds up to 646 Watch your rounding We also need the random uncertainty in the mean This relationship's on your relationship sheet It's the maximum minus the minimum reading divided by the number of readings In this case the biggest one was 655 smallest one was 635, so 655 take away 635 is 20, and 20 divided by 5 gives us a random uncertainty in the mean of 4. So writing that out in full then, it would be 646 plus or minus 4 nanometers, and that corresponds to answer D. Right, moving on, question 15. It says red light is used to investigate the critical angle of two materials P and Q. Now I'm going to add two normals to these diagrams. And both of those rays in glass are producing rays in air that are refracted at 90 degrees. So these are the critical angles of both those materials. And that critical angle is smaller in material P it's got a smaller critical angle than material Q has. Remember, the critical angle in glass is the angle at which the refracted ray is at 90 degrees to the normal. Now we've got a relationship to help us here. It's N equals 1 over sine C. Now if we have a smaller critical angle, that means we're going to have a bigger refractive index. So P has got a higher refractive index than Q. So statement one is true. The other way of thinking of it is, then material P bends the light more. 
Statement 2. Wavelength of red light is longer inside material P than inside material Q. Well, P's got a greater refractive index, so it's going to refract the light more. So it's going to squeeze the waves together more, so that's false. Remember, there's our full relationship for refractive index there. So the higher the refractive index, the more the waves are going to be squeezed together. So the wavelength of red light will be shorter in material P. And the red light travels at the same speed inside both materials. That's false. They've got different refractive indices, so they'll travel at different speeds. So it's only one, one only. That's A. Question 16, energy levels. Okay, we're asked the radiation emitted with the shortest wavelength is produced by an electron making which transition? Well, you might already know the shortest wavelength will be the highest frequency, so that's the biggest jump. If you want to use the equation, E equals HF, and F is the frequency of the photon, then we can use V equals F lambda, where V is the speed of light, so F equals C over lambda. You can substitute that in, and if we want the smallest, shortest wavelength, and if that number on the bottom is very, very small, then it means our energy has to be very, very big. So the biggest energy difference will give us the shortest or smallest wavelength of light. So which of our answers corresponds to the biggest jump? It's E3 to E0, so the biggest jump, that's answer E. Right, question 17, this is an AC wave on a CRO, and we are asked, which controls would you use to calculate the frequency of the signal? Well, there's two controls, the volts per division, and the time base. So, if we want to work out the frequency of the signal, Frequency, remember, is 1 over the period of the wave. That's a national 5 relationship. And the period of the wave is the time for one wave. So we're going to use the time base control. The time base control gives us the time that it takes for one wave to be produced on the screen. In fact, it tells us the time it takes for one box horizontally on the screen. So, looking at our answers then, the frequency of the signal would be calculated using, we want the time base, so it's not going to be C, D or E, it can only be A or B, so it's the time base and the horizontal distance between the peaks of the trace. That would give us the period, and from the period we could work out the frequency. So, that's answer B. Question 18. Uh, circuit setup is shown that the RMS voltage is 12 volts, the power is 24 watts. What's the peak current? Well, we're going to use P equals IV. I'm going to rearrange it so that I equals P over V. And we're going to use the power divided by the RMS voltage. Now that will give us the RMS current then. So 24 divided by 12 is 2 amps, and 2 amps is the RMS current. And then if we want to work out what the peak current is, the peak current is the RMS value times root 2. Uh, 2 times root 2 gives us an answer of 2.8 amps. Not volts, you do bull, 2.8 amps, that's answer D. Question 19, triple statement question. A student makes the following statements about energy bands and different materials. In metals, the highest occupied energy band is not completely full. That's true, you need free electrons in the conduction band. In insulators, the highest occupied energy band is full. Yes, it is. That's the valence band and it's full in insulators. And the gap between the valence and the conduction band is smaller in semiconductors than in insulators. Yes, it is. All three statements are true. 1, 2 and 3 are correct. 19E. Last question is the unknown equation question. Somewhere in your paper you'll always get a question about an equation that you've never seen in your life before. But don't worry because you'll be told what all the symbols mean. 
and you will be told what all the numbers are apart from one. And the one that you need to find, you'll have to rearrange the relationship to find that quantity. And in this case, it's the speed we're looking for. That's V. Now, it's V squared in this equation. But we'll worry about that later on. Let's just rearrange it and get V squared on its own. So multiply both sides by 2 and you get 2L equals rho V squared A times CL, whatever that means. Now to get V squared on its own, let's put everything else down the bottom on the left hand side. So 2L over rho A CL. That's going to equal V squared. Now let's put all the numbers in. So it'll be 2 times L. Now what is L? L is the lift force. Now, the aeroplane is flying in level flight. So the lift force is going to be equal to the weight of the plane. The weight of the plane was 80 newtons. In level flight, your forces are balanced. So the lift force is equal to the weight of the plane downwards. That's pretty tricky. Now the other numbers we should be able just to be subbed in. So there's W, the weight of the plane, 80. The bottom numbers, that curly P is the, the symbol rho. It's the density of the air in this case is 1.29 times the area was 3 times the coefficient of lift was 1.6. If you do that in the calculator, you're going to get 25.8, which is one of the answers. But beware, watch out, because that's V squared. If V squared is 25.8, we need to square root that. So the answer is not E. The answer is going to be the square root of 25.8, uh, which is 5.08 meters per second. And then if you round that, that's 5.1. So the answer is C, 20C. So there you go, that's part two of the 2015 multiple choice paper. That was pretty tough. See you in the next one.